good evening everyone so we are doing the chapter human body and organ systems we have already done some parts of this chapter in our uh, offline lectures but we'll do it online now so that we understand every part in detail okay now human body and organ systems as we have already read the textbook we know that each and every part of the human body and each and every organ in a human body has a certain system to because of which it functions so let's start human body and its organ system if you see now what is there on your screen is nothing but our body and whatever the parts of our body which is in the interior of our body can be seen on your screen different organs in our body are working in groups so that it smoothly functions and it carries out different and various life processes if you see this is the front and behind portion of our body every part of our body has to work in a group and it has to work in coordination with each other then only it can function perfectly and uniformly specific organs carry out specific steps every organ has a different step or a different way of following how the hands function same way the legs don't function how the legs function same way the stomach or any organ doesn't function a group of organs which are working together to perform a specific function is called as organ system okay so whenever a specific function which has to be followed or wherever a specific function has to be going in unison with other functions of the body that type of system is called as your organ system now there are different types of organ system let us see what types are there first is your digestive system then your respiratory system then your circulatory system the blood circulation your nervous system and then your excretory system excretory system is nothing but through which all the nutrients are used up in the body and whatever is waste is given out and then the reproductive system skeletal system then we have the mus muscular system so you can see all these systems which are there in the body are all functioning in our body in coordination with each other energy is essential obviously we need energy in our body for our heart to function and all the processes in our body to function it is essential to operate all the life processes in the human body energy production occurs within the cells so this is uh, just an image of a cell okay now cell is there in our human body in the plant in plant body as well as in the animal body cells need the supply of soluble nutrients soluble nutrients which get mixed up in the processes in our body easily what are the nutrients oxygen this supply takes place with the help of the circulatory system so if you see now whatever functioning goes on in our body it gives the nutrients which food we take in our body those nutrients are going directly to the cells of the body and because of which the cell is healthy and then it functions well then comes let's talk about our respiratory system we are inhaling oxygen and exhaling carbon dioxide okay respiration is carried out through three steps let's see the steps of respiration now external respiration now what is external respiration yes what is external respiration let's go ahead and see first one second okay so let's continue in external respiration first is your inspiration or we can even call it as inhalation okay air is taken in through where if you see the image here we take air through the nose and we breathe out through the mouth we can even breathe out through the mouth but it doesn't become comfortable enough and sent toward the lungs now it is this air what we are breathing in it is going through the lungs and it is going and getting situated or or getting positioned at the trachea which is there in the lungs next comes your expiration or exhalation 
oxygen from the inspired air now which is the oxygen this is from the inspired air which comes inside your body from the inspired air goes into the blood okay so this oxygen it is going to the blood blood obviously needs oxygen for its supply blood carries the carbon dioxide from various parts of our body towards the lungs now whatever oxygen is coming inside okay we are giving out carbon dioxide so carbon which is there in our body gets mixed with oxygen and then it goes out and it then goes out in the form of carbon dioxide so blood carries the carbon dioxide from various parts of the body towards the lungs this air is given out by exhalation so this entire process is called as exhalation then this both these processes occurring with the help of lungs are collectively called external respiration so we are <coughs> getting the oxygen inside and then giving out carbon dioxide everything we are doing from outside our body from our nose is nothing happening inside our body but from outside we are taking it inside that's why we call it external respiration then comes is internal respiration what goes on inside our body exchange of gases between cells and tissue fluid so there are certain gases which are being exchanged which are the gases now we'll see between the cells of our body and the tissue fluid tissues are a part of all the muscles of our body and the skin this is called as internal respiration oxygen moves from blood into the tissue fluid so you can see this is the blood capillaries which are roaming around so this oxygen it moves from the blood into our tissue fluids and carbon dioxide moves from um, tissue fluid into the blood then comes your cellular respiration now which is happening inside the cells dissolved nutrients like glucose are slowly burnt oxidized with the help of oxygen so whatever glucose is there in the cells they get oxidized with the help of oxygen can you see this glucose oxygen entering in that means it is getting oxidized whenever some when oxygen enters in it is getting oxidized when oxygen go out goes out we say it is getting reduced remember this so because of this glucose when oxygen enters it we get energy okay and energy is released in the form of atp that is adenosine triphosphate then waste material is nothing but your carbon dioxide which we give out right water vapors are produced during this process cellular respiration can be summarized as follows very important chemical equation it is better if you write this down can even take a screenshot or something okay let's continue respiratory system structure and function now if you see on the screen this is nothing but your respiratory system and how it looks first is your nose what happens with the nose respiratory system and respiration begin with the nose first we take in air with the nose air is filtered with the help of air and mucus present in the nose in our nose there is air sorry there is a hair and there is mucus also present okay so that mucus mucus is nothing but the sticky part which is there in your nose sometimes you'll put your hand inside the nose and all because of that the air is filtered matlab it tries kitna ho sake clean air is going inside your body then comes your pharynx can see on the screen where the pharynx is situated food pipe and wind pipe originate in the pharynx so from there your food and all is going this is your food pipe and you can see your wind pipe also wind pipe is present in front of the food pipe there is a lid at the beginning of wind pipe if you can see how the food is entering that lid closes when the food enters it opens when it goes in it closes okay this is like a valve Then this lid closes the wind pipe during passing of food into food pipe, and thereby normally prevents the entry of food particles into the wind pipe. Otherwise, wind pipe remains open only. Hence, air passes through pharynx into the wind pipe. So, wind pipe has to be remain open. Food pipe doesn't remain open. Then comes your respiratory system. How we respire? How we breathe? Wind pipe. Wind pipe is swollen at the beginning due to sound box. Okay. If you can see on your on your screen. there is slightly a swollen part and that is your nothing but from where your sound comes vibration happens now this is your trachea wind pipe bifurcates in the thorax bifurcates matlab separate ho jata hai into two different areas ek left ek dusra ek right lung mein aur ek left lung mein it gets separated lungs the lung is present on either side of the heart in the thoracic cavity if you can see on the screen on the left hand side right hand side of the heart is your lungs it is called as a thoracic cavity maximum area of thoracic cavity is occupied by lungs and they cover the maximum part of the 
heart. Okay, so this thoracic cavity is occupied by lungs and they cover the part of the heart. That's why directly our heart is not damaged when we have a collision or something. Each lung has double layered covering, which is called as pleura. Lungs are elastic like a sponge. If you can see, lungs are made up of many small compartments. They are elastic. Okay, it's like you know a balloon. It has to you know keep on going, becoming uh, thicker, thinner, thicker, thinner. It is like this. Now this the interior part. If you can see this from where the up and down motion happens is called as alveoli. Rich network of capillaries is present around each alveolus. One is alveoli, more than one together. So you can see all this entire group of grapes type thing. This is called as your alveoli. Walls of alveoli and capillaries are extremely thin. That means why they are thin? Because the breathing should happen easily. Gases exchange can easily take place across these thin walls. As large number of alveoli is present in lungs, larger surfaces available for gaseous exchange. So there is lot of space for the gas to be exchanged and to be filled up in your lungs. Exchange of gases in the lungs. And if you see carbon dioxide, oxygen, these are the two things only which are present in our body. Oxygen is what we breathe in. So gases exchange occurs continuously while blood is circulating around the alveoli. So okay. Now, if you see in the blood, we have hemoglobin, which is very important for the functioning of the heart also, as well as the blood to be red. And iron containing protein hemoglobin is present in the RBC. So there is an iron. Iron means what? That is a protein, nothing but called as hemoglobin. Which is present in a red blood corpuscle. The RBC is mean red blood corpuscles. Hemoglobin absorbs the oxygen from air within the alveoli. So, whatever the red blood corpuscles are there, they take in oxygen and then they neutralize. Not neutralize, you can say give nutrients to the hemoglobin so that our blood becomes healthy. Simultaneously, carbon dioxide and water vapors move from blood into the alveoli okay so carbon dioxide water vapor there is a continuous exchange happening carbon dioxide water vapor water vapor carbon dioxide which is nothing but oxygen so this carbon dioxide into the blood it enters and goes out in the form of water vapor this is nothing but given out from our body by exhalation so the co2 which we give out of our body is nothing but an entire process which happens in our body diaphragm is nothing but like a borderline or a covering a muscular partition is present at the base of a thoracic cavity if you can see below the lungs this is called as your diaphragm it is present between where the thoracic cavity you can see that pink color part abdominal cavity also thoracic and abdominal ke beech mein hai ye diaphragm the pink color part which is there simultaneous rising of ribs and lowering of diaphragm causes this so when we breathe our ribs come you know when we breathe it goes up down up down okay this is it decreases the pressure on the lungs due to this air moves into the lungs through the nose so when we are breathing also is not like only our lungs are functioning our nose also is functioning simultaneously when ribs return to the original position and diaphragm rises up pressure on the lungs increases okay so lung pressure keeps on increasing when the diaphragm also goes up and down due to this the air easily moves out from the nose also we can take in and take out air from the nose as well continuous upward downward movement that is nothing but called as breathing okay yes so i hope you all understood till here we'll you know just go through the entire part we'll go to our circulatory system and heart in our next lecture